Okay. For those of you just coming in, I think Bridget is just coming in. Uh, Brian. Brian's just coming in. Bridget's coming in. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, we're going to um, we're going to take a few minutes and talk about uh, what you can do with Canvas, and then we will take uh, questions, and then we will talk about how to go about using Canvas. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now, and let's see. Somebody just somebody just tried to come in. Where this is awesome. I lost my screen. Oh, there it is. Manage participants, admit. Okay, all right. So, when um, when you use Canvas, the students would type in their SID number, which is uh, like a nine-digit number, starts with a nine. Um, instructors, faculty would type in their their login credentials would be their email address. And every one of you, I'm, I'm assuming most everybody here is a coordinator. Um, all your instructors should have a South Seattle College's email address, whether they're aware of it or not. Um, my guess is, is that they're not aware of it at all and they have never used it, um, which was the case with me when I taught in the Iron Workers Apprenticeship. Uh, the whole time I was an employee of South Seattle College and I never had an idea because my check came from the JATC. So first thing is your instructors are going to have to get a, uh, they're going to have to get their login credentials for their South Seattle account in order to access their um, Canvas account. Okay, so when they log into Canvas, they're going to see this. And on the left-hand side of the screen here where my cursor is, there's a number of functions. Um, you can click on courses or this screen right here. This screen right here is my dashboard. And right here is just basically a list of all the different classes that I have, uh, either that I teach or that I have access to as an administrator or as a student. On the right-hand side, I have a to-do list. I have a number of projects that I have to grade for my students. Um, so I'm going to click this and I've got a, a different, it's the same classes that are in my dashboard, just a different format. Um, let's go to right here. This is my WFT 111 class. It is materials and testing, basically metallurgy. And in my classes, I have everything arranged in a linear format uh, in what's called modules. Uh, so at the top, we've got announcements. On the left-hand side, we've got course navigation. And I'm going to go to student view. So you can see what our students see. So. This is what a, a student in my class is going to see. Why this, this, and this are up there, I have no clue. I need to disable those and get rid of them because I don't like students clicking on things that have no function that get them lost. Anyway, so this is what a student's going to see. They're going to see a Start Here button, and I click on this. And this is the syllabus for the class. Um, when I taught in the apprenticeship, they really didn't, the syllabus wasn't as meaningful as it is as a college instructor. Um, it's basically a contract between the instructor and the college and the students. Um, when I taught in the apprenticeship, it was not a kinder, gentler time. We've referred to our apprentices as punks, and that was on a nice day. Um, Things have changed and I think they are changing for the better. Let's see. So um, I've got everything arranged in modules. So these are important documents. There's a little tutorial that I put in here on how to use Canvas. And a student would click on this and there is a link, uh, actually a video on how Canvas. to use Canvas. Student. 
And once they watch the video, they can either go back to the home page where the list of modules were, or they can click next, and it takes them to the very next page in, those, in that module. So it's, for those of you that have a, a little bit of computer savvy, a module would be like a folder on your computer, and the pages would be like files. So this module right here is like a folder, and each one of these uh, assignments, files, whatever, are like files in that folder. So next week, uh, we have a scaffolding assembly quiz, we have an oxyfuel torch quiz, mechanical shear safety quiz, drill press quiz, OSHA subpart J welding safety quiz. So in this class, the first week is all made up of safety stuff. And for instance, the scaffolding assembly quiz, I went on YouTube, I found a, a Sunbelt Reynolds. Sorry about that. I found a Sunbelt Radio uh, rent, Rentals video on how to assemble and safely use one of their rolling scaffolds. It's the same scaffold we use in our lab. So uh, I have the students watch the video. It's about a, uh, it's a 15 minute video and then they take the quiz, they click on the button. And um, I think I've got it set up. Okay, I don't think anybody's waiting. Uh, just admitted somebody. I think this is set up so that the students can take a safety quiz twice. Um, and the questions are questions that I came up with. Uh, the casters or wheels for the scaffolding should A, have no damage, B, have working locks or brakes, have locking pins or all of the above. Of course, it's all of the above. And the student would click on the answers and then they would submit the quiz. Nice thing about Canvas is Canvas will automatically grade the quizzes if you set it up that way. So current, my, my current score is one out of 10. And for an iron worker, that's pretty much top of the class, okay? So once they finish their quiz, um, they can go to the next quiz or the next, um, yeah, and, and we, I'm not gonna do that. So, um, and these are all settings that the, the instructor can customize this course uh, any way they, I, I don't wanna say any way, they can customize this course uh, to different formats, uh, different um, types of assignments and so forth. Um, my course, this course right here, I've set it up so that um, I've just taken my classroom lectures and did a video capture of me giving the lecture with a PowerPoints uh, presentation. And, you know, right here, I'm talking about a peel and shear test, welding test. And it's closed captioned because I put it on YouTube and it's closed captioned. Uh, YouTube automatically co closed captions it. And then um, after they watch the PowerPoint presentation that I've, I'm giving here, I have them take the quiz and they, I have like three questions related to the lecture just to make sure that they've watched the lecture. And then, um, oh, this, this one's only, only has two questions. Then they submit the quiz and, and then they can either go home. And so this is how, this is how I have my, Canvas page arranged. This is what a student would see. Um, they can look at their grades. Please, please, please. Okay, thank you. And they have access to their grades. Um, I have went in and set the settings on the grades so that uh, there's certain percentages. Some assignments have a higher weight for their final grade. Uh, I think their final exam is worth 15 or 20% of their final grade and so forth. And that's all stuff that's customizable by the instructor. Um, so the instructor also has a grade book that they can look at that has all of the students and all of the individual grades for the students and also a final grade. Um, because this is being 
recorded. Well, actually, even if it wasn't being recorded, I, it's got students' information on there. I can't share it with you. Um, but uh, that's, that's one of the, um, let's see, let's get out of student view. Uh, let's see, reset student and leave student view. And no, I don't want that. Nope, don't want that, don't want that, don't want that. Okay, thank you. Oh, that would be bad. Okay, so that's, that is, um, that's how I use Canvas. There's a number of ways to use Canvas. Um, I use a lot of instructional videos because, you know, most of my students are visual learners. They're kinetic learners. Uh, they're not the bookworms that the math and English majors are. You know, we're welders. Um, so we're very kinetic. We're very visual in our learning. So I do a lot of video lectures. Um, I use a course called Screencast-O-Matic to record it. And my computer has a built-in webcam. So I can record my PowerPoints with my little talking head in the corner where I narrate the PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint also has functions on the very bottom of the screen where you can click and you can draw on, um, you can draw on PowerPoint, which is a really cool feature. So, okay, that is, that's a little introduction of what you can use Canvas for, how it works. Uh, any questions before I go into how to actually set it up? How long did it take you to do all your setup work for all of this? Uh, seven years. <laughs> uh, no, um, so I've, I've been teaching online for two years. Before that, I taught a hybrid format for a couple of years. Um, and when I started teaching uh, adults 10 years ago, I didn't know how to even do email. email. So um, it's been a long time coming for me. Um, our college has a teaching and learning center that I went to constantly to get uh, help and tutoring because I, look, I'm an iron worker. I'm not that bright. Okay. Um, so now I can take a course and I can set it up in uh, about three days, start to finish. Um, and that's, and that's a three month long course. So I tell people that are just getting started. All you have to do is stay a week ahead of your students and you're fine. Okay. Um, there is a bit of tech savvy that I've picked up uh, using PowerPoint. Um, you know, I, I had to learn how to use PowerPoint. Um, I'm guessing that a lot of your instructors are where I was several years ago, or they're maybe a little more advanced than where I am. So, um, I, I don't know. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Yes, I got I got something, Doug. Um, so, do we need to um, have the college or faculty, staff, administration, or whatever approve our uh, whatever we come up with, or is that is that just in house for our like JATC stuff? Oh, you talking about uh, curriculum and and how the class is set up? Right, like if we're gonna if we're gonna teach, like if we're able to teach using Canvas, um, is it? Like I, I, I am an instructor for the cement masons. So do we need to, can we approve our own material or do we have to submit that to somebody in the college to approve? Ah, excellent question. Um, I believe in academic freedom. What I teach in my class is my business as long as it's relevant to the subject. Uh, so yeah, you're, <laughs> now I'm, now I'm getting angry. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, no, you're the subject matter experts. The content belongs to the instructor and to the JATC. So, you know, as long as, what I did was I just took what I was teaching in my classroom and put it online. Um, I'm the one that, I, I even have the power to choose the textbooks. Well, when I taught in the iron workers, um, we had our standard textbook curriculum that we taught from um, except for, I want to say blueprints 
and my my coordinator came to me and said which blue you know I found this blueprint book would you like to use it and I yeah we'll use this so um, no I your what the instructors put online is going to be um, between them and the JATC or and or the coordinator so no the college doesn't have any any jurisdiction over that to my knowledge cool uh, anything else before I uh, show you how to get set up? Okay, so um, now to get started, um, we went to, first thing I did was I logged in, and I'm not going to log in again because that takes about a minute, and I really, as much as I love killing time, uh, that's time I don't want to kill. So once you get logged in, I recommend that an instructor goes to their account, which is this button right here. And they're gonna wanna go to um, profile. I think that's the one. Nope, that's not the one. They're gonna wanna go to settings. And they're gonna wanna make sure that their email address is correct. Because Canvas is going to communicate with the instructor by email. And email is how they're going to interact with Canvas. So they can, um, they can edit their settings here. They can change their, um, their PIN or their, uh, yeah, PIN. That's, that's first password. Password's the word I'm looking for. They can change their password uh, in here. And, and this is in the settings. So after they, after they do their, after they make sure that their email is correct and they got their settings, if they want, they can set up a profile. In my profile, I've got a little uh, biography of myself and a link to my people pages. And I think I've got a link to my Facebook page. Um, my taskbar is in the way. Yep, I've got a link to my Facebook page. And that's not my personal Facebook page. That's the, the classroom college Facebook page. Um, and uh, so I've got my little bio there. I've got a little picture there. Your instructors can do that. Um, then they're going to want to go to notifications. So this is, this is kind of important to me. Um, I have my computer on in my house 24 seven and my email is open 24 seven. Um, I have no life. I, that's probably not the way I should be, but I have no life. Um, and whenever I get a, uh, whenever somebody does something on canvas, I can set the notifications to let me know. So here is the notification preferences. We've got uh, notify me right away, send me a daily summary, send me a weekly summary, but don't send me anything. Those are our four levels of notification. So in course activities, what happens in the class, uh, if there's a due date that's changed, I've got don't send me anything I don't want to know because I'm the teacher. <laughs> uh, grading policies, don't notify me. Course content, don't notify me. Files, don't notify me. Don't send me anything is what I have selected for all those. In announcement, I want to be notified right away. Um, your instructors may want to be notified at, you know, at the end of the day. I think five o'clock is when the notifications come out for daily. Uh, an announcement created by me. I don't want to be notified because I made the announcement. Um, I'm also a student in other Canvas classes. So I want to be notified right away when I get graded for an assignment that I submit. So I've got, I've chosen notify me right away. Um, Blueprint Sync, I have no, no clue what that is. So I, I don't want to be notified about it. I'm probably missing out on a lot of money there, but I don't want to be notified about it. I don't know what it is. Discussions. I want to be notified at the end of the day, discussion post, end of the day. Um, conversation message. Yeah, I'll, I want to be notified by, by that, about that immediately. Scheduling. No, not interested. Groups, not interested. Alerts. So that's how I have my settings. So your instructors are going to want to customize their settings. I'm not sure what the defaults with Canvas is. Um, I'm going to guess that it's probably not what they want. So 
Um, they're going to want to go in their account. They're going to want to go into settings and make sure the email is correct. They're want to going to they're going to want to go into profile and put a little bio in there and whatever links they want. Put a picture up there, just to be a little more human to the students. They're going to want to go into notifications and set the preference their preferences as to how uh, Canvas is going to notify them of changes. So. That's, that's under the instructor's account. Um, dashboard, we've already looked at dashboard. Please, okay. So the dashboard's gonna have announcements at the top. Please. It's gonna have a list of their classes, both in uh, this tile format, or you can go to, this is my preference here, courses right here. And I'm going to go to this. Um, we've got groups, which is another setting where if, you know, if I had 50 students and I wanted to put them in work groups like of five, I can split them into work groups of five and this would list them. Uh, calendar, um, all your assignments automatically populate the calendar. Inbox is another form of email communication just for Canvas. Uh, Commons is where uh, your instructor can go and look for people that are teaching the same class who have taken that class and posted it to share it. So um, I've put some, there, there are some welding classes on there and I've put some of my welding classes in Commons. And um, if I wanted to get more content or new content or more ideas, I would go to Commons and look in Commons at how other instructors have set up their classes or some of the content they have in their classes. And then right here at the bottom is help. Uh, an instructor can click on this and there are a number of guides or instructional tutorials. Uh, let's say that they don't know how to uh, change a setting somewhere. They would go to help and they would type in information about that setting and it's like Google search, but it's specific, specifically for how to use Canvas. Um, so I find that's helpful as well. Um, per, I work in the Teaching and Learning Center as instructional support, and instructors come to me and ask me questions. If I don't know the answer, this is where I go, and I, I try to find the answer in there uh, before I have to start getting creative um, to figure it out. Uh, I, sometimes I actually move up the chain to more experienced people or my supervisor. Um, but, you know, I try to figure it out myself first. So, courses. So that's all the navigation here, my to-do list, my um, login page. So I'm going to go to template for demo. And when your instructor gets a brand new class, say it's, uh, say it's for tile setting, cement mason, um, scaffold erectors, uh, whatever. Um, they are going to get um, a course given to them um, that is basically empty. So this right here is my empty, um, my empty course. So the first thing I wanna do, I can either create it from scratch Every page, I type in every letter, uh, and I would go this route. Or if I want to take an existing class, I can download that existing class. Now, in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to copy a Canvas course, and the course I want is template, template for Canvas courses. And this is, uh, and I want to, all content. I don't want to just do, I don't think there are any due dates on it. And now I'm importing it. Now, the cool thing is, is that Seattle College's district has, uh, they have some instructional designers at, I want to say, North and Central who have gotten together and they've given it to us to share as well. Um, we may have tweaked it, but it is a, uh, a ready-made Canvas course. So it's all set up in modules. 
It's all set up with uh, different stuff. All the instructor has to do is add uh, instructional material to it. And it's, it's, it's really a big time saver. So um, I forget who it was. I think it was Matthew that was asking me earlier uh, what kind of time frame it was to set up a class. This is a huge time saver. So it's completed. Uh, it's been uploaded. And now I'm going to go to the home page. Please. Thank you. Um, so we have our home page set up already. It is full of modules. We have module zero getting started. We have a, an announcement. Um, we've got module one. We can either set it up week one or chapter one or unit one. Uh, whatever the instructor prefers. Uh, we've got module two, week two, chapter two, unit two, whatever the instructor wants. They can change that. Same thing here. So um, this is all set up, ready to go for your instructor. So now what the instructor wants to do is they, they get this template and they're going to, uh, let's say they want to change this. They're going to go to these little three dots click on that and they're going to edit this and they can change. I'm going to change this there. I added an exclamation point. It's different now. And then I, but I don't like that. So I'm going to cancel that. Uh, no, I'm going to update it. Uh, or I can, I can also change things in there. I can uh, make sure that the students have to move through it in sequential order. So they have to complete everything step by step before they can move on to the next. Um, we can add a different requirement. Uh, let's see, I can lock it. I can make sure to keep students from working ahead, which is pretty important if, if you're making this up as you go. Uh, it's very important that you don't let the students get ahead of you. Um, you need to stay a week, ahead, <laughs> a week ahead of them. So you can lock. The uh, let's see today's okay. We can lock this until the let's see five o'clock p.m. on that day, and now the students can't get in there until five o'clock on April thirtieth. So that's that's a pretty cool feature right there. I'm gonna get rid of that. Get rid of that, and I'm actually gonna cancel all of this. So this right here, the whole module or the folder uh, or the unit, whatever you however you want to describe this package of information can be locked until a certain date. You can change the title of it. You can require them to go through all the content step by step. Um, you can require them to complete the module, the previous module before they get started on this one. So a lot of flexibility there. Uh, let's see, now course information. I'm going to click on course information. Oh, that's just a heading. <laughs> oh, okay. So, welcome. Okay. So, this is a welcome. The instructor would type in their message here. Um, if they, they can customize any of this. And how they would do that is they would go to this edit button right here. And now... They have the ability to edit this. They actually have the ability, if they click on this, they can record a video message right here. And I don't know how this is going to do with Zoom, um, but you hit start recording and it would hijack my camera, so I'm not going to do that. Um, but your instructors can actually record a video message just by pushing this button right here. They can set up a link to a YouTube page or some online, if they have uh, internet materials, uh, teaching materials, like uh, a lot of our automotive instructors are using a third party curriculum that's already set up and they just have a link to a URL there where the student clicks on it and takes it right there to them. Um, so this can be modified. So I'm going to cancel that. I'm not going to save anything. 
And I'm going to go back here. Thank you. Okay, so course information, that's just the heading. I, I've never used those in my class. That's why it kind of caught me by surprise. Sorry. Um, I'm supposed to know everything, but I don't. Uh, I'm an iron worker, remember. I, I don't know much. So this right here, this icon means it's a page. Okay, this is another page. This is a page. This is another heading. No content there. This is another page, another page. So all of these, your instructors can modify by clicking on that page, hitting the edit button in the corner, and then reconfiguring uh, what's in there. They can upload a Word document. They can link it to another page. They can record a video. They can embed a video from off of their computer files, whatever. This right here is a discussion. So this right here, you've got that little page with a little corner folded and then the type, the sentence is written on there. This is a discussion. And when we go to a discussion, this is, it's, it works just like Facebook. So you have a post right here. And then you can click on this and put a reply in. The students, as long as the instructor uh, set, put, uh, sets up the settings correctly, the student can actually record their own video message and embed it there by clicking that button. The student can add uh, media files to it. They can add a link. Um, so the students have just, just as much power to create uh, material as the instructor does to post it. Question? Okay, uh, I guess someone's turned. What's that? Okay, so again, if I as the instructor, I see this, it's pretty a generic. Um, these are instructions to me as the instructor. So uh, this is not what I want my students to see. I want to change this. So again, I hit this edit button. Please, please. Okay, and now... For the original post, I'm going to stretch this out a little bit. Um, I can edit the content here. If I have a Word document, I can copy it and paste it in here. I can, let's see, I want to change this to boldface. There, now it's boldface. If I don't like it in italics, I can undo the italics. Just like a Word document, all these little tools up here. I can put bullet points in it. I can number it. Um, I can change the size of the font. Uh, I can record media if I want to just record a message and post it in here. I can embed a, pic, a picture. Um, math, I'm not a math guy, but if you want to do math stuff, more math power to you. Um, I taught math once and I, that was enough. Um, I can attach things. I can post this to just certain people. I can make it graded. So if I click on this, graded, now I, have, I can say this is worth 100 points or 1,000 points. I can display it as points, percentage, complete or incomplete, letter grade, GPS. So I can change, um, my, I can change it into a graded assignment. I can um, group it. I can put it in. Uh, for grading purposes, I can put it in different places. I'm not going to worry about that. Again, I can set a due date for it and a time. Okay, it looks like 11.59 p.m., so basically midnight. Um, word of advice, don't set things for 12 a.m. or 12 p.m. because I'm not sure which is which, and I'm not sure Canvas does, and I'm not, I'm not guarantee you your students don't. So if you want to do it midnight, make it do at 11.59. If you want to do it noon, make it do at 11.59 a.m. or 12.01 a.m. or 12.01 p.m. Don't make it right at 12 because your students will never figure, figure it out. And I, I don't know the difference, and I'm, I'm not sure Canvas does. Okay, so let's, let's cancel this. So that is a discussion. Uh, let's see. Very, mod very customizable, modifiable, if modifiable is, yeah, I guess that's a word. Um, and then quiz. So we've got a discussion. We've got uh, an assignment. Ooh, let's go to assignment. 
Uh, this is tilted. This is very user friendly, but it's a lot of work. Um, tilted means it's transparency and learning and teaching. Uh, basically, it's a format where you explain exact every little detail to the students why you're making this assignment, uh, what they expect to learn from the assignment, what you want them to be able to do after they're done with the assignment, how to do the assignment step by step, uh, an example of a good assignment, an example of a bad assignment, um, and you know how it's graded, the criteria for grading. So Tilted is it's it's if you're a student, it's awesome. If you're an instructor, it's a lot of work to get your assignments tilted. So my goal is to have all my assignments tilted someday. I have a couple that are, but not all of them are. So I'm actually going to go to um, next. Okay, simple assignment. Okay, so this is a simple assignment, and you know instructions to complete this assignment: do this, do this, do this. And the instructor would change this by editing it. Grading criteria, you can make what's called a rubric. I did not know what a rubric was when I was a, an apprenticeship instructor. Um, I had to learn what that was when I moved to the college environment. But it's basically a score chart. You know, if you do this, this, and this, you get this many points. If you, you know, so and it's in, formatted in a table. And Canvas has built in rubrics if your instructors want to utilize those. Um, so, you know, it has all of the information that the instructor would customize. Uh, so I'm going to edit this. So if I want, please, okay, thank you. I can, let's see, I'm going to click on this. I'm going to delete all this. And I can take a Word document, and I can copy this Word document, and I can put this Word document right in there. And it even includes that my Word document has links to YouTube videos. And Canvas is really cool. You just give it the link and it will populate here so that when you publish it, all the students have to do is click on that video and it plays. Um, again, the instructor can change the number of points. Uh, they, they are going to give it a due date and submission. So this is this is a real important piece right here is how they submit it. They can submit it online. They can submit it through a text entry, a website URL, a media recording, file upload. Let's say that a, a student has to, um, let's say they're a carpentry student and you, they have to demonstrate how to pull a nail without breaking the handle off the hammer. And um, something I had to learn the hard way, and I watch, and I, I feel guilty about admitting this, but I learned it by watching carpenters. Um, you know, if you have, you know, you stick something under the head of the hammer so that it doesn't over, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, if a student has to perform something and get a video of it, uh, demonstrating that, they can actually give you a media recording or a website URL or file upload. They can, they can video that on their phone and submit it through a file upload. And, uh, and then I'm going to cancel all this. And then when the student sees this, um, there, there's a button up here on the assignment page where it has all the requirements for the assignment. You have to do this, 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 and this, or answer these questions. There's a button here that says submit assignment. They click on that, and then the students have the option of text entry where they just type in answers. They have the option of a file upload where they can get a file from their computer or their phone and upload it into the answer box. Uh, they can give you a URL, uh, so a link to a website or something that they've posted their work on. Um, so there's, there's a number of ways they can uh, submit their assignments. And it's, you know, I've had students submit homework on Facebook. Uh, I've had students print out Word documents, write the answers in, take a picture of it, and then upload that file saying, yeah, I've done my homework, I've answered all these questions. So there's, an, it's um, very flexible. Okay, so that is a, an assignment. Okay, so we've looked at pages, we've looked at uh, discussion posts, we've looked at assignments. Um, 
now we're going to look at a quiz. Okay, so click on quiz. And notice they're all pretty similar in how they're edited. You know, they've got the, you know, you've got the layout of the page here, uh, quiz in this case, um, edit. And here is the, thank you. Uh, you can put your instructions in here. And, okay, you got, let's see, let's, uh, let's change these instructions to read this, because that makes much more sense to me. Okay, so I've got the instructions updated the way I like them. Uh, I put a due date on there. Um, I, I can make it a time limit. I can limit the time. You have 10 minutes to do this 50 question quiz. Um, I can allow them to take it twice. I can let them see the answers or not see the answers. I can have them show one question at a time. Um, I can have the answer shuffled. So if they wanna say all of the above, probably not a good option for shuffle answers, but you can have the answer shuffled. So then if I, I can make questions, so I can add a question and I can choose True, false, multiple choice, fill in the blank, multiple blanks, multiple answers, multiple drop downs, which is, um, it's basically matching. Uh, well, that's matching multiple. Oh, multiple drop downs is you have a question and it's got multiple um, blanks that you fill in the answers to, but you, you choose from it. So it's like multiple choice for each question. Numerical answer. So if you have math, they can do a, a numerical answer formula essay question. So I know a lot of people don't like multiple choice and true false, but my contention is, is that if it's a well-written question with well-written answers and they are ordered correctly, multiple choice is an excellent measurement of a student's understanding of the subject matter because it, it's very objective. It, does, it takes all the subjectivity out of it. So in other words, I don't have to think well, they answer, you know, if, if you have a short answer question or an essay question, um, you have to think, well, you know, the student has a point. I was thinking the, the answer should be this, but, you know, the student, student made a valid argument. So now you're having to make judgment calls on whether the student was right or not. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of short answer or essay questions um, when I want a specific answer. Uh, essay question is fine. Um, Short answer is fine if you want to measure what they know, but if you're looking for a specific answer, say, I want to make sure they know this. Um, I'm a big fan of multiple choice. The other benefit is, let's say, so here's my multiple choice question, and uh, this is the answer I want to, that's the wrong answer, that's a wrong answer, that's a wrong answer, I can add another answer. And actually, I'm gonna make this the correct answer. So I click on this, and I can edit the answer if I, if I left something out and need to capitalize it or change it. And, uh, and then I update the question. And now I have created a question. I can uh, preview the test. I'm gonna cancel this test because I don't wanna change anything. I'm, I'm just showing you how this works. So once, once an instructor has done this a few times, it gets real easy because all your assignments are edited the same way. Your discussion posts are edited pretty much the same way. Your quizzes, um, you know, besides having the, uh, the instructions and the settings and then the questions, they're edited pretty much the same way with, you know, with the questions. Um, let's go back home. Okay, so uh, let's see. So we've looked at how to, or what a, a page is, what a discussion is, what an assignment is, what a quiz is, and how to edit those. So once your instructors learn how to log in, um, set a, add content, um, they do this a couple of times and they're, you know, they should be pretty well versed in it. Um, I'm in the TLC, I'm able to, I'm available to help them when they have questions or stuck on something. Um, I'm also a big fan of going into settings and changing some of the navigation of the course. Um, so this is everything the student can see on this sidebar menu. I like taking most of this and getting rid of it so the students don't see this stuff. 
especially if I'm not using it's like I don't use the syllabus page I don't use Panopto I don't use I don't have any of this stuff that I use so I take it out of the students option to go there so they don't get lost um, I like my course to have home page announcements and grades and that's it um, people students can see who else is in the class uh, attendance syllabus all that kind of stuff um, instructors can utilize those if they wish um, I, I don't but anyway that's a, a introduction of what you can use canvas for and a pretty quick rundown of how to set it up questions yeah I got a couple of questions for you. yes um, I was just googling but I'm gonna I have three questions the teaching learning center that's it but the upper campus in West Seattle yes it is um, this quarter we are using what's called uh, lots live online uh, teacher support and um, in your email invite that you uh, got here there's yeah, another yeah. zoom link to lots that's staffed during bankers hours Monday through Friday in a zoom uh, environment like this so any any instructor the south which would be your uh, apprenticeship instructors can utilize that Monday through Friday um, by clicking on that link and somebody will be in there waiting for them. Um, okay. I, I'm excited when somebody clicks in because it's really boring just waiting. Um, okay. okay, so next question. Um, how to get that blank template you were talking about? Which ah, so that will be supplied by um, South Seattle College. Uh, our director of e-learning, Sarah Newman, um, I think would be the one to load that if it's not automatically loaded already. Um, your instructors may log into Canvas and find that ready and waiting for them. I can't guarantee that. Uh, but if not, you know, just send me an email, send Sarah an email, and we can get it to them. Okay. And then that refers me to the third and final question possibly you said there's contacts at north and central also for these blank templates or extra templates or programs uh there th the instructional designers i think it was primarily at central were the ones that uh created the template so um where is it template template for cor canvas courses they created the original template we liked it and we copied it and we modified it a little bit to have the South logo on it and all that. Um, but they, they just, they just created it. They set up all the modules. Um, okay. And once, once you've used canvas, you can, you can create that from scratch. It's just the, the, the advantage is, is they sat down and actually entered all the, all the little things and set it up. Um, Truthfully, it looks like there, there's a lot more. It looks like there's a lot more there than there actually is. They did one module and they just copied it over and then they labeled it zero, one, two, three, four, five. But they only okay. set up one module. So does, does that answer all your questions? That so, does. It, thank you. Okay, good, good. Next question. I'm going to sing. You don't want that. <laughs> I'm a little teapot. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> so how do you keep, um, if you're doing a test, how do you know or keep the student um, from cheating? Like looking up half answers online or um, okay. looking at, you know, if it's a closed book kind of test, you know, how yes. do you know you're not cheating? So um, I'm going to go to, Okay, I'm back on the settings page for the template course. There is, at the bottom, something called Honor Lock. And it's disabled. Uh, I don't use it, but the Honor Lock feature is a online test proctor. So what it does is it takes control of the student's webcam and it watches them while they're taking the test. It also monitors their online activity. So they can't open up another window and search for information for answers. 
uh, unless the instructor goes in and specifically says, yeah, they can go to this website to look for answers. They can't go anywhere else. And what it does is it monitors where the student's uh, head is. So if the student does this, it, it, it records it. So it's recording the student. So anytime the student does this, a notification comes up and says, hey, we noticed you moved. What are you looking at? Um, so it's, it, um, that's how online proctors function. Um, I've taken classes where I've had, I've been subject to proctoring. I had a little webcam that they, they had me uh, look around the room to make sure there was no cell phones or anything. And then I had to position it off to the side so they can see my head, they could see my hands, they could see my keyboard. Um, and then they monitored the online activity so I could not open up another window. They took control of my computer. They verified that no other apps were running. Um, so, you know, now I don't utilize that myself. Um, all of my tests and quizzes are open book and open notes, um, but they're pretty tough. Uh, it requires them, I, I've written my, my quizzes to require them to um, actually understand what they're reading and not just fill in the blank. Um, let me rephrase that. The, <laughs> the curriculums that are store-bought that I use for two of my classes are kind of fill in the blankish. Um, they're multiple choice and it's more recall. So it's lower level learning stuff. I personally don't care for that. The course that I wrote and created the curriculum, my own self is higher level stuff where they have to actually understand and apply what they've learned to be able to answer the questions. Um, that's my blueprint class. I'm pretty proud of that. I was able to get the blueprints for a new building they put up on cam campus. I got the architectural prints. I got the structural drawings and the erection drawings uh, complete. And I use those in the class. Um, but anyway, I'm deviating. One technique uh, to, re to make sure that your students are teaching is to time the tests. Um, I'm not a big fan of that because some people read a lot slower than others. Um, the thing about the HonorLock proctoring service, it is built into Canvas. Um, I am not sure how many, because HonorLock charges per test. And I'm not sure how many tests South Seattle is willing to fund. Um, I know for their math and English teachers, they're giving them like one or two tests that they can use all quarter. So like midterm and final exams and that's it. Wow. So um, I, I don't have that information yet. I've asked for it and I'm waiting for a response. How many, how many tests are you going to allow? How many teachers are you going to let have them? Uh, can the apprenticeship people use them? I'm still waiting for those answers. Okay. Sorry. No worries. Okay, I'm going to dance. Uh, I, you know. <laughs> I'm an iron worker. You, you know exactly what my next statement was going to be. Um, any other questions? And again, once your, once your guys get into this and, um, you know, they're probably going to need a little bit of hand-holding at first and a little bit of help in coaching at first. But once, once they, you know, do a few things in here, it's going to become more intuitive and a lot easier. And oh, one thing I want to do um, in the chat, I'm going to take a link and give it to you in the chat. Okay, where is chat? Share, chat. Oh, come on. Where's chat? Chat, there it is. Okay. Um, Believe it or not, I've done this before. Where is chat? I'm going to stop my screen share so I can, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Okay, so in chat, I'm giving you, you a link 
to um, the South Seattle um, Teaching and Learning Center YouTube page. It's not real organized, but there are a lot of video tutorials on how to use Canvas. Oh, there's a um, Bridget. Yes, this training is being recorded right now. And I'm recording it to my computer. I'm going to upload it to YouTube. And um, if everybody would put your email address in here in the chat, I will send you a link to that YouTube video. And that'll, the reason I do that is because YouTube will auto close caption it for free automatically. And it's a lot quicker than the Zoom. If I recorded this and saved it to Zoom, it might be three or four days before I get it back to be auto captioned. If I record it to my computer, upload it to YouTube, it'll, uh, it'll, I'll have it in an, in an hour or two with closed captions. So, um, and then does everybody know that in the chat box, those three little dots next to file, if you click that, you can download the chat which has the, um, it has the emails of everybody in this, and it also has the, um, that link to the YouTube page. So, good question. Any other, any other questions before we get out of here? I, I am also in lots between noon and one today. Um, Right now, I think Olga is in lots and she'll be there till noon, I believe. So it's, it's staffed from nine to five. Um, if you have any other questions, you have instructors that you wanna connect with me, um, I'm gonna be in lots today between 12 and one. And again, it's that little uh, LOTS at, I think it's at South Seattle Colleges or Zoom or whatever. It's in the invite that you um, receive to get here today. Okay, so thank you for being here. Thank you for good questions. Um, I hope I wasn't too much of a, 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 a bore to you. Um, and I will get right on. I will, uh, I will get the, um, the video recorded and transcribed with closed captioning and a link uh, to, I'll have it on YouTube and I'll have a link to it sent to you um, here by the end of the day today. Cool. Anything else? Thanks, Doug. All right. Thank oh, thanks, Doug. Thank you. You are welcome. Thank you. All right. See you all later. Thank you. Thank you.